In part two, we're going to create another part, and that's going to be the balsa block that the car will be machined from. To make this, we're going to use 2D sketches and then extrudes, but we will introduce a couple of new concepts. We're going to create a new part. And start a 2D sketch, and this time instead of being on the base, we're going to do it on the back. We just check that our front is facing the right way up. And like before, we're going to start sketching our shape. Actually going to click twice here to allow for the little trench down the center for the tether line. And twice there, so that top line is broken into two parts. Now when I draw more lines, I have something to snap to here. The green dot comes up. And finally we have our circle. You can see we need a lot of dimensions, 10 dimensions. We can click and drag most of these parts. They're not really locked down. So let's start doing that. First thing we're going to do is make sure we're symmetrical from left to right. So we're going to go equals and tell it this part and that part to be the same, this part and that part to be the same. Now we can put in our overall dimensions. 32.5, considering the whole thing is 65 wide. And we better make this line and this line equals as well. Our overall height is 50. And just double checking our trench down here is 6 by 6. Our circle 19. And its center point height from the bottom, 29. Dimensioning a circle works just like anything else. You click on it, type in the dimension. You can see that it's representing diameter here, not radius. To do the center point, we click on it, and then the baseline, 29. This one here, six by six high. We're very close to fully constrained. It says we need one dimension. We can see that our circle can move side to side, which is very undesirable. So let's draw a center line, snapping from the center to the center here. We'll make it a construction line, and we'll use a new type of constraint, which is a coincident constraint, which means two things need to overlap and touch. So we'll click the center line of the circle, and then our center line here, and we can see that everything is completely locked. If we want to, we can click on this, hold shift and click the second one, and make them construction. So we have an unbroken solid line going around our shape. Okay, we're fully constrained. Everything is dark blue and our sketch is finished. So now we're going to extrude the overall solid length of the block. So we're going to ignore the circle for now. We'll cut that out in a moment. We'll click on the extrude tool. Notice this time it's not automatic because we have a choice of different profiles and we're going to click on all the ones we want which is the main part of the block as well as the circle in the middle and we're going to make that 223 okay at this stage we've got our main block except we don't have the hole in the end that we need at a depth of 52 can be seen here and we might think we can extrude again but it's telling us we don't have a 2d sketch to do we have already drawn it, we don't want to draw it again. So at this stage, if we open up Extrusion 1, right-click Sketch 1, we can share the sketch, and it will make a copy of us, which we can reference that geometry without drawing the whole thing again. So now when I click Extrude, I can select just the center, and tell it I want it to be 52. We have Join, Cut, Intersect, and New here, just like 123D Design. For us, we want it on the cut. You can see the preview slightly tinted red there to say it's going to cut inside 52. And we hit OK. Now this sketch will stay here, even though we've used it again. So you might like to right click on it and turn off visibility just to clean up the screen. 
and we have our second finished part. Let's save that. And we are done.